The sensational news is that Warren Inch, Federal Member for Leichhardt, long-time supporter of our campaign, in conjunction with Greg Hunt, the now Federal Minister for the Environment, have tabled a bill in Parliament uh, prior to Christmas. And uh, I'm going to read it to you. Uh, I hate reading, you know that. I'm a better talker than a reader. But uh, I'm absolutely excited. It, it is, addresses two issues. One is the movement transportation of the meat. If that is killed and consumed in community, it shuts down the illegal trade straight away. And secondly, uh, banning in green zones, which are marine parks. This is sensational news. Um, I wasn't aware of it. I only just become aware of it, and I'm sharing it with you now. Have a listen to this. This is the best news. And this is the power of the Animal Coalition. And the power of the Animal Coalition, uh, even Warren acknowledges in there, will change things. All these bodies together, one single focus, and I am absolutely stoked. Have a listen, mates. Recently in Parliament, Warren Ench, the Federal Member for Leichhardt, and a long-time supporter of our campaign to you know, end the slaughter of the turtles and dugongs, and also the transportation of meat, introduced a bill into Parliament, and here it goes. There are other issues that also need to be addressed. I've been speaking with the Minister on these, and I'm very keen that we continue to pursue these if we're going to deal with looking after the turtles and dugongs in the longer term. I certainly have major concerns with the illegal trading of meat. I know that it does happen in my electorate. Unfortunately, the turtle and dugong meat is cryovacked, frozen and transported through airports. In my view, there should be a prohibition on the transport of this meat. I'm an absolute total support of native title and ensuring the native title rights for traditional hunting are protected. However, I'm in much of the opinion that it is not the spirit of the native title for individuals to go out there and slaughter large numbers of turtles and dugongs, cryovac them up into plastic, freeze them and send them all around Australia. At the moment they can do this quite legally if they claim it's for domestic use. It is my view that these creatures, if they're going to be slaughtered in traditional ways for cultural purposes and ceremonies, should be consumed and used in the area where they are taken. Because of the a very important part of the cultural use of these animals is respect for the animal. Quite frankly, I see no respect in having them sent in cryovac bags around Australia just so somebody can enjoy a little bit of turtle and dugong in Canberra, Sydney or Melbourne. That is an area that I think we need to address. Another area of concern concerns me immensely is to see the images on Facebook and individuals going out there boasting of their slaughter of juvenile animals and what have you and making all sorts of inappropriate comments. Again, it gets back to respect for the animal and blatant abuse of it. These activities are certainly ramping up public support for a total ban on the right to hunt endangered and vulnerable species. Around the country, there is a very serious momentum for a proposal that would see the, long, see the total banning of hunting of these creatures for any reason. I would like to congratulate Colin Riddell from Save Australian Dugongs and Turtles in conjunction with Bob Irwin for his outstanding and passionate efforts. They have certainly rallied organisations such as Animals Australia and others too, such as the RSPCA, to call for an urgent change to the Native Title Act. This is understandable and unfortunately this decision will not be made in our area, but in rather it will be made in metropolitan areas, Sydney or Melbourne. Make no mistake, if it continues, particularly with Facebook images, there is a high probability these guys will be successful. While I admire the work that Bob Irwin and Colin Riddell are doing, they know that I have a real issue with extinguishment of native title rights. I urge the Indigenous communities to take control of this so that we do not lose this opportunity. That means that we have to deal with those individuals who are blatantly abusing the rules and posting on Facebook, etc. While I totally disagree with Colin and Bob in this area, I can understand why they continue to pursue it. If we do not get something done here, and in regard to the transporting of the meat, I do believe it just opens things up for the abuse. It certainly is not in the spirit of the native title. Another area that I have great concern about is the activities of a few individuals who are getting involved in taking creatures from green zones in our region. I have many examples there. One family in particular is going to a place in Green Island and in front of horrified visitors slaughtering turtles, which are seen as being like pets and large fish. These animals have lost all fear of humans. These individuals weave amongst the tourists swimming at Green Island and spear fish and turtles. They drag the turtles onto the beach, rip them open, pull the eggs out of them and cut them up with maybe 50 or 60 absolutely horrified overseas tourists standing there watching them. 
They take what they want from the turtles and leave the mess for the National Park Rangers to clean up. And the Rangers have absolutely no authority to stop this from happening. Michaelmas Cay is an area that has been protecting seabirds. The same group go out there and in front of horrified tourists club to death large numbers of seabirds and takes them away and nothing is done. You can see why people are asking the question, why on earth aren't we doing something about that when, uh, when we are making such a noise about the whales? It would be better to make green zones, in particularly those where this is, human interaction with these creatures, no-go areas rather than having this senseless slaughter. It is no different to walking into somebody's house and beating their pet kitten to death, quite frankly, because these creatures have no fear of people. I congratulate Steve Davies, who has been very involved in trying to stop this for raising the issue. I think where we are going is a good start. I certainly support the initiatives that we see here today. As I said, I urge the Minister to consider further claims on this. At the end of the day, the only way we're going to be able to comprehensively deal with this is to give the authority of the Indigenous Rangers to the Indigenous Elders, who know what is traditional and what is not appropriate to deal with this. I commend the bill to the House.